I'd like to talk a little bit uh, today, and I have John joining me again and Seamus today. I'd like yep. to talk about uh, Chapter 6 of IS 10101, which deals with verification and certification. There are some very important uh, changes to Chapter 6, which will be relevant when it comes to testing and verifying that your electrical installation is safe for your customer and the general public to use. Um, do you want to elaborate, Seamus? There's some changes to the wording about testing and verifying the continuity of protective conductors' ring mains. It's like the two uh, previous tests are rolled into one. Do you want to elaborate there is, a bit yeah, on that? Yeah. I suppose the schedule of how it was laid out in ET101 is changed in IS10101. The main thing was that we had a, a schedule of tests that were carried out. And the important one, I suppose, that has changed with the first one is the continuity of protective conductors, bonding conductors, mm -hmm. and ring circuits. It's, it's all rolled into one, Seamus. Now they just speak about the continuity of conductors. And then they give a brief list of the conductors that it's important to check the continuity of. Uh, protective and bonding conductors is part A of that list. And the ring main conductors are part C of that list. It's, it's, it is part C of that list, but it, 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 in part C it says in this case of final conductors that we, we test all the conductors. So there's no change as such other than how we're laying it out. We still have to test the continuity of both the, li the live the, and the neutral as well as the protective conductor. Yeah, I think it's important that electricians who are carrying out these tests realize that the purpose of this, these two tests are to verify two things that won't easily, uh, won't easily highlight themselves in an electrical installation. Number one, if you have no protective conductor, in other words, there's a break in your earth conductor, it's not easily going to show itself mm. because the circuit will appear to work as normal. But because you have no earthing conductor or protective conductor, it's very dangerous. Yeah. To elaborate on that, ring main, we have a very similar situation. If you have a break, for example, in the live conductor in a ring main, in that it's not continuous from the protective device all around the circuit and back to the protective device, that won't easily show itself either because each socket on the ring main will appear course, to yeah. work as normal. Yes. But then if we overload the circuit, we're going to have a problem. So this is a really important test. Uh, on our test record sheet, we refer to it as the RP plus RE test, which is one method of carrying out this test. Uh, and can I pick up on that, Dave? Just the RP plus RE. We're, we're, we're asked to co record the results of what that conductor is. So basically, if we look at the results that we have for that, it would demonstrate the length of that conductor. So if you're using a 1.5 cable, 2.5 cable, a six square cable, it would be the cross-section area of the cable and the length of the cable would determine that result. But yeah. we want to take out the, the resistance that's in the leads and in the meter that we're using. And sometimes I can see mistakes made here. So I suppose uh, your preferred method would be RP plus RE as well, where we yep. link the live and the protective conductor in the distribution board. And then if we follow that cable through all the different points of the circuit, we test all of them and we come to the end. And at the end of that, we should have the resistance of the cable. Uh, we can't add on the resistance of the leads of the meter or maybe a resistance that's in that meter as well. Now, I know there's a perception out there that when people see the null symbol on the meter, they believe the meter is nulled, yeah. but they might have nulled it with a different set of leads, which could have a different resistance to the set of leads we're putting in there. So it's very important that I each set of leads, you would know the resistance of these, and when you plug them into your, your meter, your mega, or whatever, you, you would be know the resistance of these leads, and you create the short across the live and earth pins here yeah. of, of a yeah. plug, and you would know that resistance. I know my own meter. Yeah. That resistance is 0.09. Mm. Yeah. So I, I like to see that, 0 0.09. I press null, and I know from that point onwards that I'm going to calculate the resistance of that cable. Yeah. But if I didn't know that, sometimes meters, when they go into, if I'd re taken, say, I didn't have a proper connection made between the live and the earth, I could have had a resistance of 0.26. So when I didn't have that then, the resistance is actually 0 0.09. And my calculation, from that point onwards, everything is going to be wrong. So the, so the simple message is, it's very important to zero or null your meter on the low ohm scale before you start any testing. Yeah. Yeah. And I always think it's a very easy way to check that your meter is correctly zeroed. Yeah. You join the two leads together, press the button, and it should read zero. Yes, but so you should know what result you're going to get. 
that would be the important one. Yes. And it, it also tells you if your meter is going faulty, if one of your leads are going faulty, maybe not plugged in right. Yeah. Or I see lads in there would change from a probe to a crocodile clip. You actually need to read in all your meters. This crocodile clip could have a resistance in it that was different to what you had before, maybe starting to go faulty. And that will alter the readings you're going to get from that point onwards. So yeah. it only takes a couple of seconds, John, would you say, yeah, to absolutely. set up your meter. But if you know the resistance of each set of your leads, you put it together, you see it, you null it, and then you move on. Okay. Again, we're, we're verifying the protective conductor, but I suppose we're also doing something else as well there. Yeah, yeah not, not our main one is actually the continuity of our main bonding conductors. Yeah. Um, I suppose one of the biggest mistakes that we would notice this test being carried out would be removing the parallel paths. So if you have a main bond on your main gas yeah. pipe coming into your domestic installation, you need to remove that main bond from the main earthing terminal on one end on one end yeah and carry out your continuity test yeah to confirm this and obviously again you need to return it back to the main earthing terminal yeah connect it up again yeah. okay so uh, the big advantage i see with the rp plus re method is you're now moving part of the way towards verifying your polarity as well That's so you put another right. test out of the way of zeroing out or nulling your meter. This meter has just come straight out of the van. You're ready to carry out your tests and it's most likely not going to be nulled. If I join the two leads together here, you can see that the meter now reads 0.1817 of an ohm. That is the resistance of these cables. And that might sound like an insignificant amount, but that's equivalent to the resistance of 20 meters of 2.5 cable. So if you use this meter in its current condition, you are going to get a 20 to 25 meter error on every measurement that you take. You zero out the meter very simply on this meter by pressing the test button till you get three zeros. We then separate the leads again. The meter now reads an open circuit. We join them back together and we can do this constantly and at any stage and it should read zero again. Okay, so there we go. This meter is now correctly zeroed and you are going to get accurate and correct readings when you're verifying the continuity of your protective conductors, which is what is required in IS 10101. Yes, and we talked earlier about the continuity of protective conductors and earthing conductors and bonding conductors. So. The way we normally perform this test is by doing an RP plus RE test. I spoke earlier about how we null our meter. It's very important that we remove this resistance from the meter. This is a colleague's meter, a slightly different reading to mine. I'm using this link cable. This is the cable that I'm going to use to create a short between live and earth in order to perform that test. And first of all, I have my meter set here on continuity. I will now click across my live and my earth. This meter shows a slightly different reading to mine. 
0.13, but I'm very happy with that reading. And if I press here, I remove that reading, and it's gone to zero. Now, what we're doing now is we're going to we're going to measure the resistance between the cable. We're looking for the resistance of the protective conductor. So the protective conductor is at all the different points within the installation. So we need to measure that resistance. So how do we do it? We create a link here in the distribution board, and then we'll measure. We'll pass the current down through the live, through our link, and back through the earth, and therefore being able to read that reading at it. So the first thing I need to do is I need to create a short. I'll put it in here between the live and the protective conductor. Now, it's also good to only have the circuit that I'm working on switched on. The first one I've switched in here is the ring circuit. This is my ring circuit here. And I should be able to now perform this test by plugging into each of them. You can see the reading here. The first one is 0.41. The second one is 0.44. Let's demonstrate this is further down the line. And we'll get back here to 0.44. That is the highest reading on that circuit, and that's the one we record. To test the radial circuit, I'll now go back to the distribution board. I'll switch off my ring. I'll switch on my radial, and I will measure these. Longer run. And again, switch would have to be on for this. And you can see now that this one is the end of line, and this is the one that we would record on our test. Yes, and on the continuity of earthing and bonding conductors on IS10101, um, we have to do a continuity of the ring circuit, but not just the protective conductor in this case. We must do the live, the neutral, and the earth. I'm going to set up my meter again. I switch to ohms here on the meter, and the first thing I must do again is null my leads. So I'm going to connect my two leads together. I should know this resistance. I'm quite happy with that 0.11 that's reading on the meter. I'll press test and I have nulled. So I've removed the resistance of the test leads in this case. So I'm going to start off now. I'm going to do the two neutrals, followed by the two lives, and then the two earths. So I should get the same resistance on each of them. I'm just clipping on here now to the first and the second neutral. This should be a continuous circuit right around. Getting a reading there of 0.49 to 0.52. That's fine. Now I'll switch onto my two lives. Make sure I have a good connection. And again, I'm getting a reading of 0.49. And the two hertz. And again, I get a reading of 0.52. Now I have confirmed that the live, neutral, and earth are continuous right around that circuit. Thank you very much for joining us for another webinar. And hopefully, you found it informative. Thanks, John. Thanks, Thanks Dave. Seamus. Thanks, Dave. Thanks. Thank you very much.